And, uh, and now we head to state college for the whiteout. Mm. Iowa, Penn State. So we all, uh, here's the, uh, the deal on this show, Casey. We'll pick this game because it's a good game. We'll pick against the spread. But we always also pick the Iowa total. And oh, well, yeah. I was uh, horribly wrong last week. Uh, I went <laughs> under, as one does, and they scored 41. And all, they all, I think, I think the total is 42 and a half. So I think they almost pulled it off themselves. So um, this, so we got a 40 and a half total. And it's a 14 and a half point spread. Penn State is the favorite. I here's what I think happened. I don't think Iowa's gonna score very much in this game at all. I, the, the drive for 325, Brian Ferentz, they're 10 points ahead of the pace. Yeah, I think there's a really true. good chance they're right on the pace when this game is over, that they probably score about 15 in this game. So uh I watched, you know, I watched Penn State against Illinois and that defense, they're pretty good. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they, they're, you know, Chop Robinson, Abdul Carter, they make quarterbacks pretty miserable. And so Cade McNamara may be the next victim here. The question is, what does the Iowa defense do to Penn State? How much does it slow Penn State's offense? Because they're going to slow it down some. Mm -hmm. The question is how much? Yeah, the the Iowa total. Now I'm sitting here thinking like I, I didn't even think about if I wanted to take the the over or the under. That's that's on my brain right now. But I, I like Penn State in this game. Um, you know, to be completely honest, going into the season, I said, you know, I don't know what Drew Aller is going to look like. I know the Penn State fans were ready to move on from Sean Clifford. And I think sometimes that was a little bit unfair because Sean Clifford was still a pretty damn good quarterback a lot of the time. But they're very high on Drew Aller. And, you know, he hasn't looked perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, especially last week, there's a little bit of sleepwalking, but I think he, he is the answer for this offense. And, you know, Iowa to me being able to score the, the way they did last week tells me there's no way they're going to be able to do it back to back weeks because that's just the Iowa identity. Right. I mean, you know, the fact that we have deep fakes of Brian Ferentz talking about the offense and how many <laughs> points he has to score to keep his job. Uh, some people believed it like my co-host, but regardless, <laughs> I am going to take Penn state. I know you text me about that, but I mean, that's the thing. That's how realistic this oh, yeah. Iowa storyline is that people are out there making deep fakes about, you know, Ferentz talking about how he has to hit a certain number in his contract because that's a real thing. And I think this Penn State team uh, is really going to contend against Michigan, Ohio State in the East this this year. And so I'm going to take them in the points. It's a lot of points, but I don't, Iowa can't score against Penn State, in my opinion. What scared me about Penn State last week was Johnny Newton had such a good game. Mm -hmm. against what should be a good Penn State offensive line. Johnny Newton's the, the defensive tackle from Illinois, and he was – well, he kind of plays all over the line, but he was yeah. all over the place. And yeah. he was. Iowa's got great personnel throughout the front seven. Like, I'm worried that they're, that Penn State is going to look – but the thing about that Penn State-Illinois game is when you look back up at the end, it's still a 17-point win. It's you know, right. like 130-13. to 13. It didn't look pretty, but – they still pretty much dominated the game. So Yeah, it's it's a it's definitely a game that if you weren't watching it from start to finish, you're like why are we even talking about this game? But if you were watching it, there were definitely concerns and if a, if you're a Penn State fan, you have to be concerned a little bit, but they closed it out the way that they needed to and I think maybe it's more I just don't trust Iowa here. I just don't That's trust That's the thing. I, the, the way I Penn State covers this is they they dominate the Iowa offense and mm -hmm. maybe force some turnovers. And the offense for Penn State gets some short fields and and, and gets some easy points, which right. is entirely possible. And the whiteout atmosphere is fantastic. You know, I I do remember the the one whiteout where Iowa came in and Adrian Claiborne blocked the punt, and that was that was like you never seen that many people get quiet so fast. Oh, but it's but the whiteout is one of the the cooler atmospheres in college football, and I imagine Definitely. one of the more intimidating ones for an opponent. So. Oh, for sure. For I've never I've been to the I've been to Penn State for a whiteout game. We didn't actually stay for the game. We had to like yeah. jump on a plane and, and come back to New York. But even just the atmosphere around Penn State as a whole is always crazy. But then you know that it's the whiteout, and they do have a new like energy spark with this mm -hmm. with Drew Aller and with this offense. And it's kind of like you know James Franklin. All right, like when are you going to take that next step and, and do something to really catapult yourself back into the conversation? Because it just seems like every year they fall a little bit short. I don't think it was Sean Clifford's fault all the time. I know Penn state fans like to kind of put it on him sometimes, but if drew Aller's the answer here, there's going to be a lot of energy 
uh, at yeah. State College. And I think Penn yeah, State exactly. That's one of those that can get because I was at the 2017 Michigan game, which was a whiteout, and the energy in the stadium is just crazy off the charts. And that's the one where they they flipped uh, Saquon and Trace McSorley on the first play and made it look like one was, you know, the, the basically. McSorley is, looks like the running back and Saquon looks like the, the quarterback and Saquon takes it for a touchdown. And it was it, like, from that point on, Michigan was like, well, we're done. Yeah. Michigan <laughs> we're, was like, hey, we're no, done here. We don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I, that I, I will take Penn state here. I will, I will believe in the power of the whiteout. And I also think Penn state may have been looking ahead a little bit too. Mm-hmm. You know, they were in a, 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 fir- a road conference game it was the first Big Ten home game for for Illinois, and it may have just been. And that's what. And if you're noticing a theme this week, it's me going, which of these was the anomaly just because of a weird circumstance, and which is this is the team we should expect to see. And it's it's really hard to figure out. It is. It's so hard, especially because you know week three was on paper not a good slate. You know, put that in air quotes because obviously anytime we have college football, it's a good a good week, but. There were so many games by the end of week three that you're just like, wait a minute, what happened? Florida State mm-hmm. beat BC by two points. Yeah, they had a Alabama. face mask penalty that that saved them. Like, what? Yeah, like, How it's, is that it's possible? Crazy. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm also trying to almost fade myself a little bit because mm-hmm. sometimes I'll talk myself into some things. I'm like, well, no, 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 no. You know rationally what you actually want to take. So I don't know if I'm fading myself or if I'm actually giving you my correct picks at this point because I'm just so bad this season so far. So we'll, well see. Well, here's. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.